welcome back again to our channel i'm your host Lemo carol and welcome back to another vlog if you're seeing my face for the first time welcome welcome please make sure you subscribe turn on post notification bell so you get notified each time i post a new video okay so in today's vlog i'm on my way to go to kumba from limbe to kumba i'm going to take um because i don't want to waste time on the road and those buses waste time so practically i'll take from limbe to boya and then from boya to come back in small clando cars i don't want to enter the bus because it's gonna waste me time so yes i'm going to come now i want to go and visit the lake lake barumbi in kumba i've been there before i've been there like many many years ago many many years ago and it's not a struggle to get there it's not like these other lakes that you have to climb mountains climb rocks and go through a forest to get there the barumbi is quite accessible it's like your car can literally just drop you in front of the lake where you just see the lake anyways that was what it was like many years ago while i went there but since the crisis before the crisis even had not gone there and now the crisis and all that stuff it got a little bit complicated to go there because of the crisis but family members i'm here for you all <laughs> i am here for you so i've made plans with my cousin in kumba she has arranged i heard you have to go and pay those boys when i say those boys if you're a cameroonian watching you understand me our boys were fighting for our freedom <laughs> if you're a cameroonian understand me but if you're in the diaspora you don't understand me you have been going through a civil war here in the southwest region of cameroon for over four to five years now so the areas affected are the southwest and the northwest regions of cameroon so the people who are fighting for us they're the ones that you have to go and take permission from before you go to that area because i i hear they have occupied that area around the lake i don't know how true it is but i'm what is life if we don't risk i see <laughs> i'm ready to risk it to go there the first time i do i want to go there she's like eh with this crisis you want to go there i'm like yes i want to go there so anyways i'm hoping that it turns out all right because she told me that she has made arrangement and she has settled so anything can happen even if you have made arrangement anything can happen so that's what's going to happen today i'm going to bring you guys along and please pray for me pray for me if you're seeing this video just pray for me before you even want to watch what is next pray for me so that these boys don't do anything to me i come back in one piece as i'm leaving my father's house okay okay <laughs> anyways enough of the talking let me get going i'm already late okay bye outfit for the journey yes this i'm looking simple nothing much nothing happening peace out So I left Limbe, I took a small car, what we call here Clandos, I took it to Boya, and when I reached my 17 Boya, I took another small car, another Clando, which runs the Kumba Road to Boya, to Kumba. This was the first thing I was eating for the day, I don't had anything since morning, because I left the house in a hurry. So the car finally got full, and we left my 17 Boya, heading to Kumba. I know you guys are saying, oh, that road, especially people who have not traveled this road since the crisis began, and especially those in the diaspora, they believe that this road, in short, there are no human beings passing on this road. If you pass on this road, they can kill you. Like, people have so many scary stories about this road. But take it from me, the road is not as scary as people make it sound true when you're passing through the road you see the effects of the war you see houses with bullets and all that stuff but the way people paint the scenario of how dangerous this road is they make it look like this road if you go through that road and come back alive you have done what napoleon left undone but take it from me family members the road is nothing to be scared about you just see the effect of the war Places are deserted, places that you know how they were looking before the crisis. And when you look at them now, you'll see a huge difference. The place is deserted. 
you see people sparsely here and there houses are abandoned you know businesses are closed down they have shut down so that's just the effect you see but the road on its own is not really really that scary i mean you have about five police control checkpoints so the road to a certain extent during the day is safe do not travel this road at night for your own safety i will just advise do not travel at night and on ghost town days but outside that the road is okay you just see the abandoned houses as a result of the crisis the destroyed houses that bullet has destroyed them and all that stuff so those of you thinking that this road human beings don't travel this road you'll be shocked <laughs> you'll be shocked at the amount of people who travel this road back to back okay i just wanted to put that out there and make somebody understand it's not that scary take the risks it's not that scary I have done another road trip on this channel when I went to Kumba for my friend's mother's funeral and I'm going to link that video somewhere there so you see how the road actually I think that one was more detailed than what I did now you can see the road the procedure everything I did a very detailed road trip to Kumba during the war time I'm going to link that video in the description box so make sure you check that video out so we got to the park this is what kumba park looks like for those of you who have never who have never been to kumba park this is what it looks like i got off the car had to move outside the park to get a bike that was going to take me to where i had to meet my cousin this is the famous banga school banga school every non-kumba even if you are a non-kumba child you even know that there is a place existing as banga school and this is their roundabout leading to their market and i think going down here you can also go to fiango i heard i heard this road on your right leads to fiango i've never been there or oh, i've been there i don't know i've forgotten then going this way now uh, this is the road leading to um their council kumba one council this is it right here kumba one council is their new council that's why the building is still shiny shiny <laughs> and then this road now leads to their hospital this is just like a broken path of the tar road leading to their hospital this is their hospital on hospital district hospital government hospital on the left this is the hospital on the left and then straight forward from here is leading to what they call up station i think that's their um, residential area also something like that so i got there met my cousin and off we went yo finally i'm in kuba in one piece and because i was late i delayed the person was supposed to take us there has gone to do something else and said we should wait for him at a bar kumba people don't have way to eat ice cream or something else <laughs> it's like it's only mimbo that's their only form of relaxation alcohol please if you are from kumba drop it down in the comment section people don't have relaxation spots outside drinking of alcohol Bah, bah, that's all what they can offer. <laughs> anyway, he said we should wait for him there, and that's where we want to come away for him. Everywhere, come by, say bah, everywhere. As usual, I have to tell you for this no lights. You display a kumba, I will book ahead. These people in Kumba don't know if I live here. No lights, no lights. What do you mean by I don't know where we're going to? I need energy drink. <laughs> where are we going to? Is that place not accessible? My cousin is telling me that I need to drink. I wanted us to share a bottle of drink. She's saying that no, everybody should take one, one bottle because I need energy. I don't know where I'm going to. Lol. Please, where are we going to? It's not very accessible. All things have changed. <laughs> She's saying that me, I know. <laughs> Last time, last time I came here, I was that place not accessible. You don't go there before. That time I'm on top of the password. You didn't even go now. You didn't even go now. Grass don't grow on the way to the grow. You go say you understand good. You don't know what I want to go. I tell bosses to go live a life for that heat for you. Yes, that's how I know. I'm going to shake my mouth and do my before that. It is, it is accessible. I'm going to go see the accessibility one day. Now, when you go to work off with the space, you need to reach there. You're going to say something, you're going to be accessible. 
People's cold drinks are not removing sweat. See cold drink in Kumba. <laughs> See a cold drink in Kumba. No lights. How do you put charge your phones? Villagers. Da. Say hi to the cameras. Hi. So the guy we were waiting for finally came and met us after we sat there for a couple of minutes waiting for him. So this is what the gate of the lake looks like. The entrance to it, this is what it looks like. And we moved till we got there. Now we didn't take a bike for this journey. I guess bikes are scared of coming to this area for commercial purposes. I don't know but I did not see any bike passing here all through the time I was there. And we did not equally take a bike. They told me I have to move on foot from where we were to this place bikes don't pass there bikes don't go there so i was like who am i who am i i just had to move on foot but the journey was not that difficult if i'm being honest it's just this hill this hill you see in front of you i think that was the only tedious part yes <laughs> Yeah, weakest moments. <laughs> and then you have this huge rock by the side on your right hand side on entering there. And I think there is a I know there is a historical or geographical explanation for these rocks being here. My cousin did not just know, she had forgotten because people actually I think she was one of the people who even came here for field trip. Their school brought them here for field trip and they explained the history or the the geographical explanation for why those rocks are there. It's a touristy site. People come here. People used to come here. Schools used to come here for field trips and they explain how this massive rock came about. But since the crisis, schools don't come here again. And there used to be a tour guide here who explains in details how... How many years these rocks have been how they came about all that stuff there used to be a tour guide but since the crisis there is no tour guide like there is nobody there nobody 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 but you can see that actually there should be something really really interesting and this particular rock this one you're seeing on the screen my cousin said she could remember that this particular one you're seeing on the screen is it was quite further away from us she said that one has a lot of story to tell but we don't know the story to tell but hopefully you're going to gain some other vision this is what i remember <laughs> this is the part i remember i cannot remember that climbing that he can I remember that they used to, they used to yeah. pass here like this uh -huh. cross the farm there used to be water here yeah. Oh, this is this used to be water here. They had not built that thing when we used to go to the farm here now. They had not built this part. It was a stick. It was this kind of plank like this. Ah, I never go. So, person don't stay for that kumbas, you never go borrow me. Yeah. Yes, there was water field here. So, when it rain for, it covered that stick. Ah, I can remember. Hi, there was water all over. You used to stand me up here like this, up here to see the water. Now.